Hello, uh, welcome back. Today's video is covering an interesting subject. Um, and it might occur to you that it's an odd one in the sense that I'm saying values and shadows. But um, I remember being a student and rather not knowing the difference. <laughs> and I remember just having no clue truly what values were. And we've talked about values before. You can see other videos about values. But this is a video where we're talking about shadows. And uh, before I start, I'm going to um, just thank Terry, Terry B. for a very nice contribution, uh, uh, donation. Your Shop Talk videos have... Uh, I appreciate you calling that Shop Talk. I've... <laughs> <laughs> That's the old word for it. It's a very good one. Uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, look up Gamel's book called The Shop Talk of Edgar Degas. That's craft-related talk, right? Your Shop Talk videos have had a profound impact on everything related to my self-taught efforts in drawing and painting. I'm grateful for your time and efforts to produce this material. Terry B., thank, Terry B., thank you. Uh, and I'm very pleased. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, it's such a difficult thing to think you can talk somebody into doing better things, but uh, as I do try to use images, and uh, and of course you can always uh, send me questions uh, for greater clarity uh, whenever you want uh, about anything you're attempting. But just remember the words don't mean much. You have to work it out. You have to work it out to find out what those words actually mean. Work it out with a you know painting from life. Most of what I'm talking about here is about painting from life. All I really want to do, as far as contribution of stuff, is to enable the person. Um, who is working to be the master first of nature, the ability to, to portray what you see in front of you, um, the values, color relations, uh, uh, everything, everything visual, to be able to do that with authority and, uh, and, and efficiency. David D., thank you for that nice recurring uh, donation. Very appreciated. And Robin, uh, uh, Robin B., thank you. Thank you very much. So, having said that, let's get on with our having thanked you, having whatever. Uh, Emmanuel, this is the second, maybe in a row for Emmanuel. Uh, by the way, before I forget to say anything, I, I do want to say that we're trying to do another uh, live video. I'm thinking within two weeks. So, we're talking about it, but we haven't gotten ourselves organized enough to do it even within six weeks, never mind the four weeks we talked about possibly trying to do. So, uh, in the meantime, my next video is going to be with Tom Dunley in it, um, and uh, so I hope you enjoy that. We're going to be, he's asked if we can talk about uh, things related to museums and what museums do and don't do and that sort of thing. Uh, um, so um, let's let's see how that goes. You all, as many of you have mentioned things about museums, and uh, it isn't, it's a good, uh, it's a good theme, good subject. Uh, so Emmanuel's asking, this, this is I think the second in a row, Emmanuel says, I'm trying to learn how to describe form with color instead of with value. Um, that would suggest, uh, Emmanuel, that you're new to the game. But I'll talk about that here. I was looking at some paintings by Monet and love how the shadows in some cases are just as light in value as the light. I also studied some portraits by Bouguereau and in the faces, the value doesn't go down at all when he moves into the shadows. I really think that's beautiful, but I'm having a hard time controlling shifts like that and still having it look like a shadow. Uh, you set up yourself to have an impossible job uh, to do, Emmanuel, so don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, the way you're thinking about it, is, it needs to be refined just a teensy bit and you're gonna be pleasantly surprised that uh, you're gonna be okay again. Instead, it just looks like half the face is in different color, just the point, right? Even though I'm trying to pull out the colors, I do see in the shadows of the subject I'm painting. Now, when you say you do see in the shadows of the subject, I don't know what that means. That question is an interesting when we try to avoid seeing into the shadows, except to the degree there's color movements within the shadows, then of course you want that. But, but um, that just goes back to the idea that shadows are flat. And so in the world of chiaroscuro, Degas is trying to get you to express whatever's in the shadows with absolute, uh, with obscurity, shall we say. And, this, and what's in the lights is going to be clearer. The form for, you know, for the color, color um, I'm sorry, the value shifts and those sorts of things. But let's just uh, look at some images. I'm gonna bring up some Monet and, uh, and Bougra. That's all we'll talk about today. Uh, and just with a hope to, to be able to clarify that 
that the point here about shadows and values. Uh, the first thing I would say before, as I'm going into this thing is that you can't, uh, you can get, you could, you could paint a, an area that has virtually no shadows in it and have, have it resemble like, like this one by Monet does, have it still resemble the field just by doing colors. But when you're, if you're talking about shadow, um, it's pretty rare for a shadow to actually be the same value as the light. It, it rather defies the term shadow. Um, and remember, shadow is that part, uh, when you're talking about the, a light source, that part, where's my light source coming from? That part that doesn't receive the direct light. So here's the lit part, and here's the part in shade, right? So you understand that there's going to be a significant difference if you're talking about a significant light difference. So in this, in this cliff here, you see the dark parts, those parts are shadow, the, everything else is well lit. Uh, the water just coincidentally happens to be that, that uh, value too. It can be a mixture, but the value uh, doesn't produce much contrast except in the shadows, right? But the way you think of it is you can't produce form without light and shade. You need shadows. You need gradations of values. And it implies a, a light side and what I'm showing you here, a dark side. So if you're talking just common sense, you can't make form well. So if you have everything the same value, it's going to be very difficult to see the form. You're right about that. In fact, you'd, you'd argue that it's impossible to see the form per se without values. Remember the color values is really the word, not color. Even though I say to you that color values, uh, I'm going to say color, color means that there's a value involved and then there's a regular blue hue, and then there's a, an intensity involved. So don't misunderstand me. Every time I'm working, and I I've never would treat the shadows as if they were, as if they were without uh, absolute value content. That's not what you're saying though. So let's just get on with some other point. Uh, page two of this. So this is Monet standing on the same cliff, by the way. I thought that was rather amusing, oops. It appears to be maybe the same day, certainly a cliff that he resorted to. It looks like the same bluff, though, and the little little, little kid standing out there behind her. And uh, theoretically, maybe the ocean in the distance behind them. But this is a case where you're talking about the great theater of the sky. The great, the great light is the sky. But we still think of it as ambient light when you have a power light on, so the single source that we talk about when we talk about light and shade, that single source is the light, is the sunshine, right? So you see the back of her shoulder here being lit, back here being lit, back here being lit by that first, by that primary source. This is ambient light, which is the general light of the room. So his studio is, 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 the, is the orb of the sky, right? It's that great, it's that great dome above us. And so all, because of that, all the blues you'll see in the shadows these, this is more heavily greened because this isn't getting much of the sky. This is getting, this is picking up its color from the field, right? Uh, this is probably already green underneath, but it, uh, but nevertheless, even if it were blue, it would have more green than most other areas. This sort of thing is picking up something like the gold of the grass, presumably coming up from down below. All that's backlight. If it's bouncing off something, it's backlight. And if it's the general ambient light, that's the, that's the general light of the sky. On a sunny day, the general light of the sky is not as bright as the sunlight. So you'll have light here and shade. Now the whole thing is lit, right? Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, for those of you for whom I'm expressing the self-evident, I apologize, but I think it's a big deal. Emmanuel's really, needs, you know, this is that think it through thing and, and separate your terms and make sure you know exactly what you mean. Don't confuse, as I did, shadow with values. Shadows and values, what are the values of the shadows, right? What are the values of the light? And you do imply that, but I just found that it, I, I was doing something rather like that, whether you do or not, that was frankly confusing. So I may get back to these shots here. Now I'm showing you a picture by Monet that has almost no value differences in it. The light of the sky, the most lit part of the picture is up here and presume, presumably everything to this side, our side, the part that's nearest to the viewer, you, is all in, on the shadow side of that, of that primary light. But the sky has still got some light into it, enough light than blueness to make all, everything look rather blue, in the, certainly in the distance. 
but it's still, so these are significant value differences. The single light source is so weak that you can almost not see value differences. And, but that still doesn't mean there aren't any. Let's get to the Bugro question though. Um, and I don't, by the way, I don't find, just, you're gonna find that painters do good value. So make sure you put in your list to do value relations. Don't try to do things without values. That's the primary part of the color note, okay? It's the first part of the color note. So here's one last, before I go to the Bugros, here's one last, uh, I think this is the MFA shot. Uh, but here you can see um, something that has very shallow values, but you should be able to pretty plainly see that where there's significant massing of values, there's a different, uh, I mean, a shadow, ma a shadow uh, cast, cast shadow, there's definitely gonna be a different value. So, and this now, this gets pretty light, powerful lights bouncing off the wall, off the street probably. Uh, sorry about that whistle jazz. <laughs> and um, so on. Uh, but you can see this light gets very, the shadow gets very, very lit, but it's still darker than the lights and, uh, and it defines itself. Uh, by the different, it differentiates itself nicely from, you know, from the general light of the building and from the, certainly from the, the, the sunny, you know, spots. Uh, this isn't, this down here, these people, this isn't light and shade. These people are wearing dark clothes. And um, while well, sometimes in uh, dark clothes can have a very, very light edge to them, uh, this is one of those places where you get to look at values. Are these the darkest darks in this picture? Uh, but 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 don't confuse them. Don't confuse them with just saying here's shadow and here's something that isn't shadow. Uh, theoretically, at least, the left side of these might be in shadow. But the fact that they're dark clothes would leave them as dark blobs against that white background. Probably no matter what value they are, or how much transition or light they have on them. Uh, so don't confuse those. The general ambient, the general face of these this this building is lit. And it's lit in a raking light so that you're getting you're getting. Uh, sh uh, it's not a side light, it's a front, uh, what should we say, three-quarter front light. So uh, I, won't, I don't think there's more to say about that. But Bougaro is an interesting other case, and this just help you, helps you to think this through, but I'm suggesting to you, and I've seen other shots of his, of his studio, but I want to show you Bougaro's studio because you're going to see that Bougaro was working in a top-lit studio. See the shadows under things, under the easel? See the little blob shadows, blobs, blobs, little blobs? <laughs> this stuff indicates a top light. He also is working in a, he also has a north light a window. So what you're gonna see in the photographs is a combination of top light and one side lit. And uh, uh, let's, let's just go to those, but think about that because what I'm, this is in one sense exactly the same as what, what uh, you're dealing with with Monet basically a, a, a ambient, powerful ambient light. In the case of Vougaro, it's his top light. Um, and by the way, looking at the shadows on his face, you can see that much more clearly perhaps too. You know, see how the under shadows are the real things and the, anything from the side isn't as dramatic as the... the um, so for what it's worth for the moment. All right. Um, so now if you take a look at... Uh, uh, particularly the one on the left, you can see that the shadows, if this picture is lit from the left, and judging by the arm, it's lit from the left, right? It's lit from over here. And uh, where else can we see that? Um, you, down here, you can't even see it, but lit from the side, this whole plane here would be the same as that plane. You can see there's a top lit plane here, that's the top light. This is presumably side lit here. So it's some combination of top light and, and the side. And you're getting the same thing here. It's, you see what some people call the raccoon eyes, the dark two eyes, happening because the light is significantly from the top. And then there's a side element. Now, it could just be that she's sitting with a three-quarter top light, you know, just a light coming down like this. And what's causing all this backsplash may not be entirely the light of the room, but might be a, a, a light cloth to the side where he's lighting up his shadows. He's trying to get his shadows to light up more. But don't confuse them. Uh, the, uh, even here, the midtones, these are midtones. They're not part of the, they're not, they're not in the most powerful of the direct light. So you can see how much weaker the hand is than the head. So um, 
but whatever, uh, let's just walk away from that one for a second. Have a look at this one over here. I mean, you'll see the same thing over here. His shadows are very lit, but it just we're talking about bounce or we're talking about the ambient light of the room. So this is very lit. It doesn't have to be. Another painter in another picture, this could be a very dark shadow line here. And even on a white cloth, this could be almost disappearing into the background. As the dress does when you get down here, this tends to, right, you see it just tends to disappear into the ground. Again, here's that top lit indicator, you know, right, when you see a dark across this whole horizontal line here, that indicates top light partially. So this is a, a frontal light, as the original light, frontal coming from our right, from your, the viewer's right, your right, as you look at the screen. And uh, the sh so this is the shadow, even if it's an ambient uh, light. I don't think I've ever seen Bugro make shadows any dark, lighter than that. But there's still enough there to have the form. It's not a very pronounced form. The form is very, is very flattened. And if you really want to have flattened form, that's the way to get it. But I've never been attracted by it. I love, I love form in the sense of the 3D sense. Uh, I love that when it happens. And uh, I don't know if I show one here, but I'll... But I'll um, uh, I meant to separate these so you could look at me. But in any case, let's talk about this last one here. Uh, this one on the right. Uh, so excuse me for not being in the room for this. <laughs> I hope this is not a headache for you, Mr. Producer. Uh, but this is a very lovely portrait. Much, you know, much, it looks like it's more advanced in terms of his skills than the other two. And, uh, but again, you can, you can plainly see, see the light source here under the nose. The strength of the light is in the underplanes, right? And even here, there's a, a shadow that doesn't go across here, but it just sits in the middle of her forehead, which means we're talking about a serious front lit face highly lit from the front so that the shadows are the low portions here, here, and here. And this isn't shadow at this point. This is a mid-tone along here. So I would refer to this one as a top lit picture. If you're thinking this is a shadow, you, would be, you wouldn't be right. But again, if you want to see what, what, how, what these are really doing, are they really this lit as much as the light? Just blur your eyes and you'll see they will tend to start grabbing on and being more part of the shadows than this section is. And you'll see that with each of these pictures if you blur your eyes at them. So um, that, let's leave it at that. I'm not sure there's more to say about that. I'll, I'll, I'll end up with this one right here. It really does clarify what his studio is doing. But this is a case where if you want to draw all around a figure, you want to get light from every direction. If, and if, if you're ground, let me see, if you want to draw all around a figure, you can either light the figure so that, the, so, so that they're against a background of such and such a value that the or such a value, I should say, that the light side reads as a silhouette against the dark background, but the background on the shadow side, if the shadow is dark enough, will read as a silhouette in reverse. So you have the shadow side appearing dark against light, even though the background is all one tone. But again, the general light from the front here is the ambient light. He's trying to imply, he's doing this entirely in the studio, unlike Monet, and he's trying to imply outdoors. So his the way of doing it is to use the top frontal light, some combination of the top, maybe a lowering. I can't remember what exactly the configuration is, but it, I could, wouldn't be surprised if, if it, if it, if it uh, was north and then went over the top. But here he's got on the side here, he's got a side light that's actually brighter than the front light. So that's this is the source that's creating the form most dominantly, right? That's the major value contrast. And this picture has a number of places. It has a feel. It's very hard, difficult to read the form, uh, but the places where it's easiest is when that's articulately lit. Um, the left side here, the left side here. So this whole very pale tone isn't lighter than it isn't as light as the shadows. Uh, and then nowhere through here. And by the way, even the front lit part, the front lit is treated as if pretend there's no highlight over here. A front light here. It's a front light, and so the and it's high, so the lower portions are giving you what we call the shadow, even in a thing like this. So it's a general light, and then there's blip, blip, blip of shadow, and so on down below here. So even so, there's a this is in the case. This is something I would suggest to you. It gives you something rather like a double light. Strong strong side light is the equivalent of double light. It very much weakens the form. It weakens weakens the roundness. So. Um, uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Let me think if there's anything else. Um, um, I should actually probably have brought one into you uh, with the idea of just showing one that's in, you know, completely set up to be 
silhouetting and dark on one side and light on the other, but almost anything I show you is going to be done that way. Most pictures I paint are done that way, where the light side um, of your face or whatever I'm painting, if it's a portrait, is lit against the background that's darker, and the other side is darker against the background that's lighter. Not automatically, because but I do it because I actually rather like that better than the sort of flattening of form you get when your lights become, your shadows become this lit. So, but I'm just thinking that what you're asking me, uh, Emmanuel, is what you're guessing is true, isn't true, that I don't know of any painter who paints his shadows the same value and just tries to use color to, to make up the form. I don't think it's possible to do that. So I'll go take a quick look back at your, at your question again, see if I've missed something. And uh, so I'm trying to learn how to describe form with color instead of with value. And so don't do it. Don't give up on that game. I was looking at some paintings by Monet and love how the shadows in some cases are just as light as the values in the, as, it, as the light. Just look at them better and really, really understand where the light's coming from because you probably won't find that's true. I also studied some portraits by Bougro and in the faces, the values, the value doesn't go down at all. Now, that is, I haven't found one like that. If you have one like that and you want to send it to me, please do. I really think that's beautiful, but I'm having a hard time controlling shifts like that and still having it look like shadow. It can't look like shadow if the shadow, by definition, is darker than the lights, right? I mean, your lights wouldn't look like lights if the shadow was the same. The whole thing would be a light. So think that over. Think that through. Um, instead, it looks just it looks like half the face is in different color. When you paint it, yeah, that's what you would get. You'd get it to a very odd look, and it's not something... Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a thing. Put, should we put it that way, as they say these days? Even though I'm trying to pull out the colors, I do see in the shadows of the subject I'm painting. Well, um, yeah, you know, my, my sense of this is you, you talk about trying to pull out the colors. You might want to think about that. All you're trying to do is, is get the color relationships right, which will include the value relationships. So the process of doing colors is a process that includes values. So I'm repeating something I started this whole thing by saying. And, and those are the primary, that's the primary consideration I would make about this subject. Just get your values, see how, even if it's very minor, so you're going to have to see how different they are from the lights. And use the blurring of your eyes to rather distinguish those things. You'll see one of them will stay in your eyes while the other one will start receding, start, start joint, tending toward the shadows. You'll see there's a difference. All right. Manuel, give that a shot and uh, get back to me if you like. And... Uh, and uh, I think I'll leave it at that. So I wish you all a very nice painting week. See you next time. Again, thank you for those wonderful contributions.